The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship this weekend. On this Labor Day weekend, we thought we'd uh, have a little fun and uh, do a little best of the best of the summer hits. So uh, please remember if you, to support our ministry here at Good Shepherd to use the uh, link on the bottom for the online giving. We appreciate any support that you can give us. This weekend, I want you to kind of sit back and relax a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about what are the components of worship and especially how we use music. Lutherans are known for singing about their understanding of God. From Luther using the common language and tunes from popular songs when writing his hymns, to J.S. Bach and his masterful use of the organ and voices, to contemporary songwriters like Marty Haugen, we sing about God. Today we'll use a variety of hymns and songs to show the different components of worship in song. Get, sit down, get your voices warmed up. Let's join in worship. We begin worship with a time of sharing our cares and concerns for one another. Our stories become our witness of God's grace. Amazing grace is John Newton's own heartfelt expression of gratitude to God who helped him turn from his life as a slave trader and eventually fight against slavery. Later in life, Newton became a supporter and inspiration to William Wilberforce, who led the fight to pass the British Slave Trade Act in 1807, which abolished the slave trade in the British Empire. British Empire. The power of confession and forgiveness can change the world. Our chains of sin that bind us are broken. We sing our confession. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am bound, was blind, but now I see, was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good his word my home secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone i've been set free my god my savior ransom me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun Forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be forever mine. You are for 
Join me in the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess confess that that we we do do not trust trust your abundance. abundance. And we we deny deny your your presence presence in our lives. We We place our hope in ourselves and and rely on on our our own efforts. efforts. We We fail fail to believe that you provide enough for all. all. We We abuse abuse your good good creation for our our own benefit. benefit. We We fear fear difference and do not welcome welcome others as you have have welcomed us. us. We We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, Lead Lead us, us, so that that we we may may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through our Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Once free of our sins, we sing of joy that gathering to worship God brings to our lives. Rusty Edwards provides Christians with a hymn that articulates a contemporary version of the mission of the church. The unity of the church, local and universal, is at the heart of this hymn. It is not the responsibility of only missionaries or ordained clergy to practice mission in all of its forms, but it is integral to the service of all in the church who are united by Christ and have a sense of his resurrected justice. We gather this day with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. May it be with you all and also with you. The hymn of praise is a celebration of the wonderful things God has given us, and we are thankful. During Advent and Lent, as we prepare for God's wonder, we may not sing a hymn of praise in anticipation of what is to come. While God loves when we bring him our everyday trials, it is so important to take some time 
just to praise him for all that he is. Our God is an awesome God. The song, Great Are You, Lord, helps us enter into that state of praise for God and all that God is, for God is love. We sing together the great wonders of God. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, the pour out our praise, it's your breath. In our lungs, so we pour out our praise, to you only. You give life, you are love. You bring light into the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we. Let us pray our prayer of the day. O Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us towards all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Yep. 
Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. 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 There you are. Where have you been? Hi. Also, around? Hi. Hi. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. What was that? I know what it was. It was a reminder. It was a great reminder <laughs> that when two or more are gathered, Jesus is here. Amen. Amen. Yes! Bye! See Have you next a great week. week! First reading today is from Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7 to 11. So you, mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will re require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm reading today is responsive reading from Psalm 119, verses 33 to 40. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your teachings. I shall keep it with all my heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for that is my desire. Incline my heart to your decrees, and not to unjust gain. Turn my eyes from beholding falsehood. Give me life in your way. Fulfill your promise to your servant, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the reproach I had dread, because your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your commandments. By your righteousness, enliven me. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 13, verse 8 through 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another. The ones who love one another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in revealing and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify the desires. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand and sing a song to prepare our hearts to hear the good news. Catherine Hankey, while recovering from an illness in Africa, wrote a long poem about the life of Jesus. Several of the stanzas make up the hymn entitled, I Love to Tell the Story. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it's true. It's sad. Satisfies my longings as nothing else would do. I love to tell the 
story will be my theme in glory to tell the old old story of Jesus and his love I love to tell the story how pleasant to repeat what seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet I love to tell the story for some have never heard a message of salvation from God's own holy word I love to tell the story I'll sing this theme in glory To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and His love I love to tell the story For those who know it best Seem hungering and thirsty to hear it like the rest And when in scenes of glory I'll sing the new, new song I'll sing the old, old story That I have loved so long I love to tell the story I'll sing this theme in glory To tell the old, old story Of Jesus and His love Our Gospel this Sunday comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. Jesus said, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, from our Heavenly Father and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Boy, Jesus is in a part of his teaching that gets to be a little bit tough. Would you believe that this Matthew 18 is sometimes treated like a verb? You find this section of scripture in many church constitutions because it's meant to be the model for church discipline. Now notice Jesus has three steps. First, if you have, it says, if another member of the church sins against you. Okay, let's get into that sin word a minute here. Um, if that person wrongs you, if there's something that happens that you're not comfortable with, um, or that maybe the person didn't know offended you. You need to go to that person and tell them. Boy, that's difficult, isn't it? We can, we can share it with everybody else looking for uh, advocates, but it's so hard to go and share, to, share with that person. But keep in mind the good model. You go to the person and talk to them. The rest of the community doesn't need to know. 
In our modern age, though, you know, there might be just one little codicil to that. If it's a situation where the person, it's, is, they know they're not going to be hurt, then, uh, then they can go and get the advocates. But that is kind of what's been happening in our society here recently, is that those who have not felt like they can be heard have joined together so that they can speak with one great voice. Maybe that's a better model. So if the person doesn't listen to you, doesn't, doesn't seem to understand how they've offended you, then you bring a couple witnesses. The witnesses are there to help out. Now, one of these things where it says like two or three are gathered, in the Jewish tradition, it took two witnesses to convict someone. So this idea of there always being two, notice Jesus, when he sends his disciples, they go by twos. Having that person there to support you, to have your back. And when two people agree, that seems to be what is there. So by looking for some of those to advocate, advocate for you, pardon me. Advocation, that's one of our uh, baptismal promises we make, that we're going to work for peace and justice in the world. And one of the ways to do that is by advocating, helping people to find their voice, to be a support to their voice. And then the third step, if the person still is so stubborn that they won't listen, you are to take it to the church. Well, that's, that normally things don't get that far, but sometimes things have to be there. And that's what the church acts as an advocate. We are there to help show the world where there are wrongs, where there are sins, where things are not right, not just, not equal. And if the person still doesn't hear you, doesn't respond, doesn't show forgiveness or remorse, Note, it says you are to treat them like a Gentile or a tax collector. And in Matthew's gospel, who are the people that Jesus is talking to and trying to redeem? The Gentiles and the tax collectors. So it's not that you shut someone out, but that you help to bring them back around. And like he says, when two or more are gathered, I couldn't help but think about how we've been doing our digital worship here for many months now and it feels like we are gathered with you and you are gathered with two or more there and through this media we all have to be reminded we are gathered together in God's name and you know the power of two people agreeing on something and asking Jesus it's maybe a little bit of a litmus test for the request but notice what Jesus says. If you ask, I will bind it. I will bring it here. I will bring it to you. It might be different than what we expect. God usually is better at surprises than we are at thinking up them. So it allows us to be open to this. And like he says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Today, this is what we celebrate that God is among us, whether we are gathered together physically or we are gathered together digitally. We are all here in God's presence, worshiping him. We continue our worship with wonderful song. Amen. The words of the Bible have inspired many different hymns and songs. Today's readings are no exception, and our hymn of the day reflects and reinforces the messages heard in scripture and sermons. Blessed Assurance by Franny Crosby tells of her walk of faith, knowing God is with her in all situations. This hymn invites us to walk with Christ each day of our lives. We sing Blessed Assurance. <laughs> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fortress of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of the Spirit, 
washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels intending ring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness and lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Together we confess the faith that we share. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. Share the peace of Christ with those with whom you are gathered. Well, welcome to our mission and ministry highlights. It's at this time of, in our service, we'd like to highlight for you some of the work in the ministry that is being done here at Good Shepherd. Next Sunday, September 13th, is God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. And I'd like to give you a little video here with uh, Bishop Eaton, our presiding bishop, introducing to you what God's work, Our Hands Sunday, means. Hello. September 13th is our annual God's Work, Our Hands Sunday, a day of service when the ELCA shows up serving the neighbor. It won't be the same in other years. It'll be quite different this year because of the pandemic. Nevertheless, there are many ways that you can serve the neighbor. We'll give you just a few examples. But remember, always follow state and local guidelines when gathering in groups. Think of those in your congregation who may need help with yard work and outside home repairs. Perhaps you could plant fall flowers. In areas where food pantries and other donation sites are open, families can collect food, diapers, formula, hygiene products, toiletries, and other items needed in the community. Write cards and letters to members of the military and emergency and healthcare workers in your area expressing gratitude for their service. Call or write letters to isolated seniors. Explore faith-based advocacy by organizing a watch party to view Tools for Loving Your Neighbor, a webinar hosted by the ELCA and the Episcopal Church. Invite people in your community to join in. Gather virtually with people in your congregation and your community to talk about what service means during this time of COVID-19. How have you done service differently this year? 
What are the ongoing needs in your community? And how can you continue to help serve your neighbor? Any of those ideas are great activities. Do me a favor, video a short clip and send it in to us. We wanna make an ELCA God's Work Our Hands video. God's Work Our Hands Sunday is the way that the ELCA shows up freed in Christ to serve the neighbor, even in a pandemic. This is the way that we are church together. Now next Sunday, we are not uh, doing anything formally organized here at Good Shepherd and invite you to be uh, kind of creative and go do your own type of mission and ministry. There's ideas in the newsletter, there's ideas on the website, but what we'd really love to have you do is pick up one of the Good Shepherd t-shirts. If you'd like to throw a couple bucks in for it, great. If not, hey, wear this, take some pictures or videos and share them under the hashtag, tag, hashtag GSLC serves and we'd love to see what you guys are up to and uh, we'll be able to spread that in the community. So uh, start planning for next Sunday what you're going to do to be God to do God's work with your hands. We thank you for the many opportunities that you give us to do min mission and ministry here together and to share the shepherd's love. Let's continue our service with our song of thanksgiving. As we celebrate the abundance God has given us, we sing our thanks for being able to share with others for such a gift. As the grains of wheat tells the story of how that which is scattered brings forth a bountiful harvest of food for the body and soul. Our song of thanksgiving as the grains of wheat. As the grain of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, May we share this presence of your love. As the grain of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come. All creation shares this feast with you. As the grain of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. We lift to God our prayers this day. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative works of churches in this community. Strengthen the ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places suffering from drought, flood, storms, or pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths towards peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police 
towards laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit, especially those whom we name in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain us in our work, O God, and give work to those who need it. Shape societies to ensure fair treatment for all who labor. Help us to love our neighbors in and through our work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equip, equip them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer can be sung to bring a deeper and broader experience to prayer. The Lord's Prayer has set, received a variety of renderings, and we sing now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the and the glory forever. Amen. Our worship ends with a blessing to send us forth with God's promise to be with us. There are many sung versions, but we leave you today with these words. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into the ways of truth and life. Amen. Ascending song is meant to set the tone for the rest of our day and week until we return again. This song reminds us of God's will for our life when we give it freely in love to one another. We belong to God and that is a promise we can all live with. Take my life that I may be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. 
Take my voice and let me sing Always only for my King Take my lips and let them be So filled with messages from Thee Take my silver and my gold Not a mite would I withhold Take my intellect and use Every power as thou shalt choose Take my love, my Lord, I pour At thy feet its treasured store Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God.